35 and 24 Morgan uh, drivers and it, they really haven't closed down very much. Pierre Caffer uh, in fourth position is only a further nine seconds further back. Got to say though, Rusinov pulling his weight there. Isn't he just, yes, and uh, any, any uh, problem about the uh, less well-rated driver in that car, the uh, silver driver, as opposed to the uh, two platinums of uh, Mike Conway and John Martin, um, certainly, uh, Roman, uh, as often happens with two good teammates, you very often uh, might find the least good driver raising his game to kind of match the other two uh, drivers which he might not be in a position to do were he not in a team with two such strong drivers yeah that's a very good point sorry just closed the wrong window on my computer again so inside the last two hours of the race and uh, whatever else you say about this we may not have had the knock them down type of race we expected but there's been plenty to talk about let's continue the rundown 10th position overall Giancarlo Fisichella is now just two seconds ahead of Stefan Mucca the 51 from the 97 Ferrari from Aston and all of that time has been gained back in the pit lane uh, they took uh, two three seconds out oh, sorry not just two seconds last time out of Fisichella at the pit stop it was uh, up over six seconds at one stage, so it's 51 from 97 by a couple of seconds. That's uh, action that we might want to pick up on in a little while. In GT Am, the 95 Aston still leads from the 96 Aston, although there's a minute and 10 seconds between them. Then we've got the two Porsches in between those two Am cars and the rest of the Am field, which is headed up by the 81 Ferrari of Rui Aguash. a bit of a funny old day for Ferraris and Astons coming together Porsche's not had a great day as well I don't think any of those cars has had a completely clean run they've all had a bit of bumping and boring yeah what's uh, what's fascinating what, what, what I find interesting John is that the number 92 uh, Porsche is just half a minute behind the number yeah. 91 car and remember it was the number 92 car uh, which Mark Leap had that problem with right at the start with the front right wheel uh, of that car and he lost um, well it was it was at least a lap wasn't it uh, on the rest of the field and we talked about him uh, having a fight up through the field well uh, he hasn't exactly come up through the field but he has got himself onto the tail or Ricard Leitz now at the wheel uh, has got himself uh, onto the tail or within half a minute of the other Porsche uh, uh, number 91, Jörg Bergmeister, which hasn't done anything wrong, really, except spend too much time coming into the pits under the safety car and things. Yeah, fair point, well made and nicely presented. Paul Trustwell there, along with myself, John Hindhoff, Joe Bradley in the Power by Nissan pit lane. As we continue with our live coverage, the RadioLeMond.com commentary team. LMP2 battle for fifth position, beginning to hot up now as Bruno Senna continues with his seemingly endless round of PR opportunity. Jacques Nicolet has Gunnar Jeanette just three tenths of a second behind him. Jacques, the gentleman driver in the 45 car, doing his stint. Got some of it, some of his time behind the safety car early on. Gunnar Jeanette coming back from a frightening skydiving accident where to quote him earlier on in the week in an interview with Joe, I had to use one too many parachutes and neither of them worked. Got away with a broken tibia, awful injury, but under the circumstances, could have been a lot worse. He's already stood limped and been helped onto the podium at the last ELMS race. And great to see him back in a prototype car here, having uh, completed that for Ram Racing in the last ELMS race. We'll have the Next DLMS race, of course, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, live on RadioLeMond.com. Just a three-hour dash for that. Just two more rounds left of that series, with uh, Ricard coming later in the year. And it's Hungary next, if I'm not mistaken, for the ELMS. And then shortly after that, we're off to the Circuit of the Americas. And you'll be able to follow all of the action in round number five of the FIA World Endurance Championship with all of the early sessions live on RadioLeMond.com in audio. And then we'll pick up the whole race live on FIAWEC.com and our syndicated television partners. So every session live on RadioLeMond.com in audio, sound and vision on FIAWE.com for at least the race. We did have qualifying here 
uh, as well. We'll await confirmation to see if that uh, is the same at the Circuit of the Americas for round five of this championship. Keep your eye on FIAWEC.com for details. Now, other battles that are hotting up. Stefan Mucker, I mentioned a couple of laps ago, within a second to Giancarlo Fisichella, and there is the proof for those of you who have got the luxury of television screens and Stefan Mucker, nine years the junior of Giancarlo Fisichella. And Stefan now beginning to look like he can challenge the former Formula One pilot. Darren Turner, I think he said, tell him to push a bit harder there, didn't he? <laughs> As Mucker has closed into a to challenging position now, and we haven't always seen this between the Astons and the Ferraris. Good chasing. It does seem as though, bizarrely, the Astons do better at the end of the stint when you'd expect the Ferrari as a mid-engine car to be slightly better balanced and perhaps not use their tyres as much. And the leader going round the outside of the Crone Racing car with Nick Johnson. That was not a good move by Ben Trelluet. Not a high percentage move there. He sort of committed himself to it. I think uh, Johnson was expecting him up the inside and left the room there. But only have taken him to drift wide. The prototype again coming on the blind side of the driver sitting on the left of that Ferrari. You know, the problem about running onto uh, that part of the circuit, though, is where there's all manner of debris from various incidents that have built up over the uh, over the race, John. And that's not just uh, tyre debris, as uh, you get inevitably, but uh, because of the various incidents that they've been having, um, that will have involved various bits of bodywork as well, I suspect, down there. Must say thank you to Martin Pass over at Audi, who's been, as ever, feeding us with uh, information up uh, over our text chats that we have with uh, some of the team PRs. And we should also say hello to uh, Teresa and Sarah, who aren't here this weekend, and to uh, Henry Collins, who I remember very dearly as the caterer for Audi Sport UK in the British Touring Car Championship days when uh, Audi were so dominant in the early to mid 1990s it was that a great year wasn't it in 1997 when audi super touring a4 quattros took seven championships across the world in the super touring 2000 regulations uh, hello to you guys and ladies at home so this gte battle still rages on with stefan mucker still hasn't really made it what I would call a definitive challenge to make that position. And not sure how long these guys have got to go, Paul, before they pit again, the 51 and the 97. As they head down that back straight. Uh, just, just have to have a look at that one. I shall await your sage words. You do get the slight thought from watching the body language of both of these cars that Mucker is biding his time here I'm not sure in the context of what we've seen in this race now that if Mucker doesn't think he can get by and pull away he shouldn't try and do that oh and Fisichella the Ferrari just getting away from him right in the centre of the corner there fast hands from Fisichella just applying a touch of up or and getting that car back under control as the leader Ben Trelluet comes and breaks up the action for a moment and that's bad news for Stefan Mucker who had to get off his racing line in the middle of a one of those medium speed left handers that there seem to be so many of here So in terms of uh, the pit stops for these two they're pretty much on the same schedule the Aston uh, will be pitting first, but only by a lap, I reckon. And uh, it'll be in around about its lap, 167, 68. So it's got another uh, 23, 24 laps to go uh, before we get those coming in. So that's a good half hour's running, uh, in fact, a little bit more than half an hour running 
from these two. So, uh, yes, whilst Muka may be biding his time, um, there's there's no time to be bided in a way. If he can get through, then uh, it would be worth him doing so. Um, it's earlier on. Um, when this battle happened, uh, we had the same situation when Mukha got past Fizikala. Yes, that's right. Well remembered, Paul. And the Gunnar Jeanette Jack Nicolier battle continues as well down through the centre S's. As Gunnar clearly using a lot less road in the Greaves Motorsport car than Jack is using at the moment. He drags up behind, coming out the curve of the sole, dives into the left-hand side of the road, pulls alongside, pulls alongside into the braking area for the next left-hander, but can't get it done. This is a battle for position. Nicola is absolutely entitled to defend the short straight down the next left-hander. And Jeanette is nosing ahead for a moment in the Greaves car, but up the inside, Jack Nicola, a little glance to his left. He hooks the apex on the left-hand side and holds up the Young American. Well, that was very good driving by both men. Racing room asked for and given. How to as far as that battle is concerned, Jack Nicolay is going to be the one who has to come into the pits first. Uh, and it's going to mm -hmm. be about seven laps uh, before Gunnar Jeanette has to come in. Uh, so if Gunnar can get past, uh, then all well and good. But if he doesn't get past, then uh, Gunnar will have seven laps to uh, lap more quickly and then uh, do it on the pit stop, as it were. Well, we have another look at that. Excellent manoeuvre. Carried on for half a lap there. Let's go down into the Aston Martin pit. We were wondering about uh, S uh, Stefan Mucha's uh, tactics. He's into the pit lane, comes the second place P2 car. That's Alex Brundle at the moment as the uh, pit stops are starting for the leading P2 cars. And in fact, Gunnar Jeanette just goes down the inside of Nicolay into the first turn with the Number two of Lloyd Duval right up there, tailpipes. Uh, Joe Bradley is down in Aston Martin World, and uh, that really is like a theme park down there with five pits together. And Darren Turner is his next interviewee. Darren, we were watching you watching the footage, and uh, Stefan Mucker getting uh, having a great time out there battling with Fizzy Keller. Is it times like that where you wish, wish I was in the car doing that? No, I'm quite happy having a bit of a rest <laughs> now. I mean, that was uh, had a really good stint then, um, trading times with Bruni, and uh, it was very close. and a little bit of traffic to and fro between us and I really got held up by the, the Porsche when I went out so I was a bit disappointed because they're a lap down and not very uh, sporting really to be getting involved like that but anyway that, that cost us some time but then after that it was good fun I was having a, a nice time really having to concentrate and try and put in some good lap times to try and close that gap to Bruni but out of the car now I'm watching uh, Stefan do a really good job he's closed right in on Giancarlo and you know hopefully he can find a way through without any, uh, without any trading of paint are there, are there any apparent weak spots where he may be able to find a chance? Is there, I mean, looking at the way the cars are lapping, they're pretty good equally, uh, both equal on, on, across the whole of the lap, or is there anywhere that suits the Ferrari over the Aston and vice versa? Um, the Ferrari's slightly quicker on the main straight, so out of the last turn they're slightly quicker, but in the infield we're slightly quicker, so overall lap time is very, very similar. The only difference is when you're dealing with traffic, if you've got a little bit more top-end speed, it's slightly easier getting past uh, some of the cars out there. But, you know, to be fair, they're, they're very equal between the Ferrari and uh, even the Porsche, because that was uh, ahead of us at the time by a few seconds, even though it's a, a lap down. So, um, you know, that, that seems to be very even as well. So, you know, every car has got a strength and a weakness, and, you know, you've got to try and exploit that. Uh, if there comes an opportunity where that car's, you know, in a weak spot and you're suddenly on them, then you've just got to try and pounce at that time. But, um, you know, we've got... A bit less than two hours to go, and um, still a long way to go, isn't it? And we just need to keep the car in one piece. And the main thing is to keep an eye on the points at the moment, you know, the championships. Uh, and you guys never make mistakes, so it makes the racing fantastic. I'd like to, I'd like to say uh, yeah, we don't make mistakes, but I had uh, two or three fairly uh, uh, sizable lockups in that uh, stint that cost. You know, you add them together, and it's probably two seconds. But I like to think the other drivers all have little mistakes like that as well. So uh, you know, when you when you're pushing on the limit like we are. It's very easy to just go over the top of it and you, you lose a bit of time and you have a quiet word with yourself on the next lap and try and calm it down and then uh, try and get that rhythm going again. Joe, Thanks. before you let uh, Darren go, can you just ask him a about the tyres? The, the Porsche has a, a different construction of Michelin tyre, but remarkably, I think, the Aston and the Ferrari are on exactly the same exactly the same tyre and they're very different cars. So how does that play out in the, in the, the length of a stint? 
John's asking Darren about the fact that the, the Ferrari and the Aston are on exactly the same construction of tyre and yet they're such different cars, one a mid-engined, the Aston a front-engined and the Porsche is on a different tyre to both the Ferrari and the Aston. Does that have any significant uh, factor into things? I think the car, the tyres have developed more for the Ferrari because of the test program and everything but you know we've got those tyres and we work with them and you know they work very well, very pleased with the Michelin and you know, each of our cars have got slightly different uh, balance at the moment between 97, 98 and 99 and it's not really tyre related, it's just us engineering it. So always happy with the consistency and, and how good the Michelin tyre is, you know, it's very uh, good throughout the stint and it, you know, it just drops off a little bit as you'd expect from an hour and a bit of driving, um, but you, you know what you have underneath you all the way through the race. So you, you get that tyre and you have to make it work for your car um, and, it, and it works very well. Thanks for that insight, Darren. Excellent. Great stuff. Joe Bradley in the power by Nissan pit lane. And I, I just can't get my head around that, to be honest. The, the two cars so fundamentally different are using the same construction of, of tyre. That proves, if proof were needed, uh, just how clever the guys at Michelin are. Just uh, following up on some of our reporting from other forms of the motorsport, other parts of the motorsport world. Midweek motorsport on Wednesday, we'll be examining the rumours of, I think which... We, among another, a, a number of people, have been talking about for some time Michelin coming back into Formula One. That appears that that is closer than ever before and may, in fact, even be as close as next year. And the requirement for Michelin from Michelin that F1 go to 18 inch tyres that may be disappearing. Compromise is being talked about in the Formula One world to get Michelin back as a sole tyre supplier to replace the current Pirellis and of course it's a new formula in Formula 1 in terms of engine and chassis next year so I suppose not a bad time to do that as Kiko Ihara gets back into the Nissan powered machine Jack Nicolet has just jumped out of the 45 Morgan Oak Jack Nicolet the archetypal privateer runner in sports car running and of course that has allowed Gunnar Jeanette in the Greaves car, number 41, to uh, move a ahead of him. That was the battle that we were watching on the screens a little while ago uh, for fifth place in P2. And Joe's down in the Old Morgan 45 pit as the multicoloured car with the road sign graphics pulls out. Let's have a word with Jacques Nicolet, we heard that. Well, we saw, I should say, and heard that he was having a fantastic battle with Gunnar Jeanette. He says, give me five, he's getting his breath back. These cars, let's not forget just how physical these LMP cars are. A lot of downforce, same amount of downforce as seeing a three car, very, very grippy. Jack just getting uh, a well-earned uh, glass of water and getting his breath back, so he's definitely, definitely uh, been working hard. Jack, you okay for a word now, getting your breath back? That, uh, we know how physical these cars are, especially when you are battling so hard with Gunnar Jeanette. You had fun there. You, you, I am, quoi? Full? You, you had fun? fun. Uh, yes, they were fun. It's uh, a great pleasure this time, and uh, really, uh, I enjoy really the, the session. Really. We enjoyed watching your session, and it was a great battle to watch. Uh, yeah. We forget, we, you make it look so easy on the track, but these cars are very physical. Yes, the, not not only the car, the track is very physical, because uh, we don't have the, the habitude to, to turn in this uh, in this way. And uh, for young people like me, uh, it's hard. Yes, I understand, Jack. Thanks for talking to us. I'll let you get your drink of water. And I think what Jack was trying to explain there was the anti-clockwise direction that we've We've mentioned all week, John, and uh, and as we get to the closing stages of this race, maybe it is the uh, the fitness that's going to show in some areas. Your of sixth place of qualifying, you're progressing okay. Yeah, yeah, we're moving through the field. Uh, yeah. Had a bit of a tire strategy in the in the first part of my stint there. Massive, massive understeer in the car, but the guys worked hard on the pit wall, and we managed to cure it with a with a different combination of tire uh, for the second stint. So pulled back what we lost and ended up status quo. Um, so we're back in it and uh, looking forward to the end of the race. Can you advance from this third? 
Yeah, I think we're in we're in with a shout, a genuine shout of, of picking up third place from the other car, and it's quite important, obviously, because they lead the championship with us second. So, uh, yeah, we, we need to be making progress past them if at all possible. Thank you. Joe Bradley with Jack Nicolier and Louise Beckett with Alex Brundle, in case you didn't recognise the second place, or sometimes second place, uh, car in P2. Pierre Kaffer now has that distinction uh, on the pit stop uh, rotation, which is kind of mixed up a little bit more in P2 than it is in any of the other classes. Yeah, so just uh, trying to look at that one whilst we were hearing from the two of them, uh, and it's Pierre Kaffer who will be in the pits uh, first, and then Roman Rusinov in after that, but they've both got a little way to go, yeah, another 10 laps, I reckon, to go um, before they both have to come in and make their stops. Um, but, uh, of course, Roman Rusinov, having uh, maintained that uh, lead uh, in the class that uh, Mike Conway so nicely set up for him, uh, has lost very little space at all during uh, that stint, um, and he leads Pierre Kaffer at the moment by um, a full lap. Mm. Um, and uh, as I say, Pierre Kaffer is going to be uh, coming into the pits next. He's in the pit uh, lane now. Oh, he's in now, isn't he? That's yeah. What happened. Um, and then Roman Rusinov will be coming in to hand over to uh, the uh, third driver of that car, John Martin. Uh, looking at the leading Audi Ben Trelluer with what, an hour and 36 minutes to go how's uh, the and there he is out on the track how is the how is the strategy playing out for that car well i don't know if this is good fortune or good planning but uh, typical audi um i was looking at about 45 minutes per stint for uh, for audi in order for them to be able to uh, make it to the flag and if they can uh, carry on doing at 45 minutes their next stop is going to be at half past four uh, brazilian time um which is in seven minutes um in real time and then they can do another 45 minutes on that tankful uh, new set of tires uh, and then they'll be uh, home and dry so uh, two more stops with the first of them coming up in about six minutes for the leading audi of uh, benoit trellue uh, which will uh, this time around be coming to be handed back to marcel fester who started it and while paul was explaining what was going on in p2 uh, in uh, p1 the p2 Second place car, the PCOM car, has Nick Manassian back on board and leaves the pits, having now dropped down to fourth uh, position in that class. We also had the GTE AM leader in, Christian Poulsen, takes that car back out onto the circuit. It's sitting in 12th overall, it is still the third GTE car in amongst the GD Pro cars. York Bergmeister, having uh, put a bit of ground on his teammate, is only three seconds, four seconds behind Christian Poulsen and for the first time then in a long time we will have the GTE Pro first, second and third together on the timing screen without the interloper if you like of the GTE AM leader. And Nico Prost by the way back in the number 12 Lola Rebellion. At some stage and I know just listening down there in the pit lane Um, at some stage, it would be nice to stick your head into Rebellion and see if you can get a quick word with uh, with Bart. I mean, he's probably on the pit wall, isn't he? That would be the issue. Um, just to see how next year's plans are coming on. It may be that Bart's listening in, actually. So if he's not, if he is on the pit wall, can you have a wander back so we can have a chat with you? Although, in fairness, you are allowed to cross the pit lane, Joseph, if you want to. I can indeed, and I have been uh, just savouring the atmosphere here in Brazil mm -hmm. from the pit wall, so that's where I will head now, my friend. Thank you. It's been nice to hear how that uh, programme for next year is coming along. They've made the commitment quite early to have their own P1 chassis built to the new regulations. And that has to be uh, the way to do it, isn't it? To commit early on, get yes. your uh, ducks in a row, and uh, even to the extent where that they've had to sacrifice a little bit out of the 2013 uh, programme in order to push the 2014 one. Well, I, I think, you know, I think that's part of the Toyota philosophy as well, if I'm honest, Paul. You know, Porsche should have had mm. their car running um, publicly for the last 
a um, couple of months you know, that video came out just before Le Mans and we don't know when that was taken uh, so you know it's, it's unlikely that it was taken two days before so at least a couple of months ago oh now a little bit of a interesting incident there on the front straight as the number one car has slowed as he was coming past traffic and allowed uh, Nico Prost a, a sniff of getting a lap back, lap back here it was the 24 Olivier Pla a P2 car that was the fly in the ointment for our leader but no it picks up speed again and Ben Trellier continues yeah you know it's a it's a shame that Toyota have felt the need to withdraw one of the cars we hear that uh, strong indications indeed even from their drivers tweeting today that there'll be two Toyota TSO 30s at Fuji for the uh, second to last round of the championship and that, uh, that is all good news, but it's full steam ahead for that dual hybrid one motor front, one motor rear uh, 2014 Toyota, which I'm guessing they're going to call the TSO 40. I'd probably be to call it the TSO 31 now, wouldn't they, just to, uh, just to make a liar out of me. But the, the point they, is... They, they, they haven't decided, and now they have. Yeah, exactly. Now they have. The, the, but the point is, the quicker that you can get that car running for next year, the more likely you are to, to bang out any any bugs in it as Stefan Mucker has no that's the 98 car getting out of the way I thought we had a change in the lead there and then it went straight back in GTE uh, Pro in fact it was Pedro Lamy who is still fifth in that category making sure he wasn't a factor in it and Roman Rusinov the leader in P2 is in the pit lane now, has he got enough of a gap, Paul, to hold on to that lead without giving it up? I think he has, hasn't he? They've, they... yes, he yes, he has. He's got a full lap of a lead on uh, Bertrand Baguette, so uh, he should be able to get in uh, and hand the car over then to John Martin, and uh, then John Martin will be on his way. And uh, let's say the uh, the driver lineup in that car uh, does make it a very strong uh, proposition indeed. And uh, Rusinov has done his. Let's just check to see the exact time that uh, Rusinov has done behind the wheel of that car. He got in it at 15.06, so he's done his hour and a quarter, which is what he has to do. That's the uh, minimum driving time. And uh, so rather than run the full uh, number of laps that uh, he would perhaps run on his stint, uh, he's done the minimum in order to uh, just uh, qualify that driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, if you're not uh, all fair with the regulations, the P2 and the GTE AM class, you have to have one non-professional driver. There's a, a precious metal driver's grading system with platinum and gold being the pro classes, silver and bronze being the non-pro classes. I, hear, I, I won't call them amateurs because they're still out there doing a pretty good job of work for the, for the most part. And in those two classes, in those two categories, there is a minimum drive time for at least one of the non-pro drivers, if you have more than one, must do that time. And if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the driver doesn't score points, it means that the car is eliminated. In the other classes, if any of the drivers don't do their minimum drive time, it's the driver that doesn't get the points. But there is also a maximum drive time, and if you exceed the maximum drive time in any of the classes, the car is excluded. And a couple of the teams fell foul of uh, those regulations in the American Le Mans series yesterday. I'd see that Core Autosport shot themselves in the foot again. The amount of times those guys have thrown away championships and race wins by making wrong tactical calls. And uh, they had to put John Bennett in for the last three minutes of the race in Baltimore yesterday, having somebody's stopwatch was slightly wrong. And that cost them the race win. So it's not just about the nut at the end of the wheel in terms of what goes on in these endurance races very much Paul the guys on the the pit wall who are doing the cal calculations about tires and fuel etc etc and of course making sure everybody's done their their proper lap times and and got the the right amount in and the call from that pit wall for Audi is that Ben Trellyway should come in uh, but Paul uh, very very important to get it right on the pit wall uh, exactly right yes and uh, I think uh, as you say Trellyway should be due in at the end of lap 100 and he's in the lift two 
uh, according to uh, my little calculation here. Um, I mean, there was a, um, a driver at Le Mans, wasn't there, who uh, drove more than four hours. I don't quite know how that could happen, but uh, in one of his uh, stints, um, actually went over the uh, the four-hour driving limit. Um, but in comes Ben Trollier then. And Joe Bradley is there. I am indeed. Ben Trollier is now no longer in the car because uh, Marcel Fasler has taken that seat off him. He's just uh, strapping himself in as the car takes on fuel. Now, if this stop is anything to go by, the number two Audi will be shortly after. They are changing tyres on this car. You can hear the uh, wheel guns in the background. So the uh, now we've got the right rear going on. We've got the right front left to do. And that wheel is now on. Last wheel to go is the left rear. That's happening now. A well choreographed dance group as the mechanics just dynamically flit around that car. That car is now back out into the uh, into the race with Marcel Fasler at the wheel. So rejoining then, and as you might imagine, the well-oiled machine. The good news for Fasler is he gets further than the number two car, and nothing has fallen off it. Inside 90 minutes now, then. And that means that uh, just one more stop for this car. Marcel Fessler uh, will just need to do one more. It'll probably be a fuel and tyres, bearing in mind the uh, success which uh, Ben Trellier had on his second set of tyres. Uh, the full 33 laps, which is the full mm. fuel uh, that an Audi can go on its 58 litres of diesel. Down to the and, pits, uh, uh, Paul, and Stuart Hall is with, uh, is with Louise. I'm with an exhausted looking Stuart Hall. How was that stint? And tell us about that damage you picked up. Uh, it's really frustrating. Sorry, sorry. The, whole, the whole race has been a pain in the ass, really. It just, um, we lost the lap with a safety car early on, which didn't make it very easy. And uh, we were catching the, the 95 car back up and had a front left tire delaminate. It started feeling a bit funny and uh, delaminated on me. So we had to make an, an earlier than scheduled pit stop. But you know, it's still an hour and 20 or something to go. JCW will be pushing as hard as he can, so, you know, we'll see where we go. Just to confirm, there was no contact with any other car then? No, I didn't. I don't think I hit anybody. Well, I had contact with another car, but it was the other side. It was nothing to do with that. It was a front left that had... The tyre had already gone by then, and I was trying to get back to the pits, and uh, the green car out there that seems to be in everyone's way was in mine as well. So, um... No, a bit frustrating, but you know that's racing. We'll we'll push for the next one hour, twenty minutes, and see where we end up. Thank you. Well, to compound the issues of the number two Audi, that uh, report of speeding in pit lane has been confirmed and acted upon, and it will be a stop and thirty-second penalty. Thirty-second stop and go penalty for speeding in a pit lane. Confirmed there by Eduardo Freitas, our race director. And that, I think, Paul, was uh, during that whole wheel falling off incident, wasn't it, that we noticed that they had been called uh, for that? Exactly right. So, uh, yeah, whether or not... Uh, I don't think... I mean, it won't put them further back into the clutches of the Rebellion car. That will be... Uh, it will be too much for them to do that. But uh, what is interesting that uh, Eduardo Freitas just chose to uh, make that announcement over the public um, pitch to car radio rather than just privately to Audi. So uh, he wants to make the point, uh, even if there is only an hour and a half of this race remaining, uh, that speeding in the pit lane is to be penalised. Yes, there's been... Uh number of people called for it during the early part of the week and that normally attracts fines quite hefty fines that which go up incrementally the more times you are caught but then of course when you get down to the sessions that count like qualifying or the race whether it's not being track limits speeding in the pit lane or any other of the penalizable offenses offenses that can be penalized let's put that into some form of english uh, then you tend to get the stop and hold or the drive-through penalties. Persistent offenders may well be fined as well, of course. And that would come after the race. As the number two comes into the pit lane, now staying left early. And 
coming down towards pit out, which is where Audi are situated. Like Duval ensures that he is on the pit lane speed limiter as he heads towards Joe Bradley, who is down at the Audi end of things. Is there a penalty box or will he stop in his own box, Joe? I think he's going to stop in his own box. He's got, uh, I can't really see any officials who's going to, who are going to time it, so maybe they rely upon the team to do that. In fact, I've got a team member in front of Brad Ke Brad Keller bringing the car to a stop and another team member has got a stopwatch. In fact, Brad's got a stopwatch in his hand and didn't imagine otherwise they've... Uh, Did they stop Brad's the engine, Joe? I can't tell with my... Uh, oh, with the diesels, of course, you can hardly tell anyway, can you? I can't tell, but we, we have got the ride at the front of the car with his hand held up, indicating that the car is going nowhere. Alan Wentnish looking on from the uh, front of the pit garage. It's a bit of sport Brad coming out the right. Counting him down, and he's been given the wave off. So, what felt like a lifetime was indeed only 30 seconds was that guys stop and 30 second hold correct meantime nicola prost went through to complete another lap but he's still two laps back from that like de valcourt so hasn't been able to take full advantage of that of course the uh, the other thing is um, which we'll get excited about, or we might get excited about, is that Loic de uh, is getting towards the point where he needs fuel as well. So even though that was a pit stop, uh, it wasn't a pit stop at which he was allowed to put any fuel in. Uh, so he'll be in, uh, I suspect, in the next couple of laps. And uh, as a result of, uh, in, in another, yes, either this lap or the next lap, uh, in order to refuel, uh, and that will be for Loic to hand the car back to uh, Alan McNish. Let's go. For the car number two, one minute, stop and go oh. penalty for unsafe fees after a pit stop. Car number two, one minute, stop and go penalty for unsafe release after the pit stop. Right, okay, it never rains but it pours, uh, being told from the pit lane from Audi that it was the missing wheel that caused Lake Duval to go over this pit lane speed limit and now Joe Bradley called for the incident of the unsafe release as well so that's going to be a stop and one minute hold and still they can't uh, they can't fuel that car of course well I'm with Benoit Trudier Benoit I know you're probably doing your best not to smile but the, uh, the, the issue is that the number two car has been given now two penalties, this one for a full minute. That's going to help your championship if this car drops away and allows the Rebellion here to come second. Ah, I don't wish anything to the number two car, it's our mate and uh, honestly it's, uh, it's not the way I want to come back on the championship. We want to fight equal and uh, was good on the track and uh, I'm not expecting things like that. Uh, unfortunately they don't have a good race today but uh, it's a uh, it's very tough race it's really difficult uh, honestly on the track it was really tough difficult to avoid the problems with the traffic and the grip it's very poor and uh, so it's really really tough race we saw benoit that you had many many uh, close shaves out there it's really tricky yeah we saw you had quite a few close shaves with other with other cars one in particular where you want to drive off the track yeah, there is some guys don't check in the mirrors and you think they have seen you and they do do not so sometimes you can, you have to avoid it and go off the track it's not a, a nice thing to do but uh, when you don't have choice you need to do it and uh, unfortunately it's always the same guys and uh, we have to talk about it because at the end it starts to be dangerous. Thanks Benoit, I'll leave you to it. While we were talking to Benoit there, John, that uh, number two Audi has been in and soaked up that one minute uh, penalty and is now back in the race. Like Duval getting plenty of practice of uh, in and outside circuits and bumps, isn't it? When you're doing your flying, your uh, pilot's license, plenty of practice coming in and out of the pit lane. We're heading in towards the in fact, we're inside the last 80 minutes of competition. I have a feeling that that's a fairly fired up Frenchman in that number two car at the moment. Uh, Nico Prost, then as he comes round the end of this lap, he is on the back end of the same lap now as Duval. And anything else uh, that's absolutely right yeah. uh, John but he's going to be running out of fuel as well so uh, this is now uh, what you see is what you get in the sense uh, they're both pretty low on fuel they're both be coming in uh, to make what will be their last stop before the last one 
uh, that's usually penultimate, isn't it? Uh, stops. Uh, so we, we do have a bit of a battle on, but uh, in all fairness, um, the rebellion's pace just won't match the Audis. So uh, they'll need to have some other form of misfortune uh, to affect this number two, uh, a real thunderstorm rather than just it raining, um, uh, in order to get the second stop of the podium. Um, but uh, as far as the um, third step, I mean, it's no doubt going to be rebellion because the P2 cars, although they've been going very, very strongly, are already, what, seven, eight laps behind the uh, three leading P1 cars. Uh, at Karadich says, how can you give two stop and go penalties for the same incident? I'm very confused. No, no, one of them was for coming into the pit lane and uh, speeding, and the other one was for unsafe release. And now the number two is in for its regular stop, as Lena Gade, the number one team, number one, if you see what I mean, chef to keep, wanders back, look to Valsin. Did I do that? Was that for me? As the progressive designed and engineered pressurised the drink spot goes in to the left of the driver this is going to be a set of tyres as well Joe is it? Yeah definitely they've got the tyres ready I think it's probably the nature of the track it's a very hard track it's tight it's twisty it's got some really fast corners that will really take it out of the tyre and I think that's why we're certainly not seeing any tricky spinning out of the set of tyres We've taken on fuel, we've taken on tyres, we're about finished. We've got the uh, left-hand rear to do. And then to finish that, Brad Kettler waves the car off for the third time in what seems like a couple of minutes. Yes. But interestingly, Duval did stay at the wheel for all of that. So he is now, I mean, you can't really measure this in terms of stints, but he's been in the car since uh, three o'clock. Uh, and he's been in the car for an hour and three quarters, in other words. Uh, and he'll do another stint here. These tyres will last in th another 33 laps. Uh, so um, probably then we'll just get the car being handed over to McNish uh, for the last stint only. Um, but I'm surprised, not surprised, but... Um, uh, Duval has done a longer stint than either McNish or Christensen did before him. I'm going to give you fair warning that I'm, I'm going to ask you questions about the leading GTE Pro Cars pits uh, and uh, what they need to do before the end uh, in a moment. Uh, we're hearing that there's news about Fernando Alonso's motor racing career coming possibly today, possibly in the next couple of days. If it doesn't break whilst we're on air today, We'll get to it in Midweek Motorsport, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, RadioLeMond.com, 8 o'clock UK time. Hello to Ollie He's Gavin. Going to drive for Porsche. Well, uh, strange things have been said on this <laughs> uh, on this service before, have they not? Maybe he's going to Red Bull. Um, hello to Ollie Gavin, Yardley Hastings' finest sports car driver in Baltimore, tuned in at the moment. Nice drive yesterday, sir, to second place through the carnage. Rebellion, who were for a moment in second place with Nico Prost coming into the pit lane and Loic Duval goes across the start-finish line and retakes that as the Lola Kube, powered by the Rebellion Toyota engine, pulls in next to Joe Bradley. Yes, it does indeed. And uh, the driver, Nicola Prost, is staying with the car. Let me see if they're going to take on tyres. It looks like they're not going to take on tyres. Well. The tyres were brought out onto the apron and were ready, but the uh, we've got a crew member at the front of the car he tells him to wind the car up fuel fuel only guys fuel only for that number 12 rebellion so they really are wanting to take the race to the number two audi give it a go give it a go gareth bale has signed for real madrid by the way 86 million quid that was something i saw earlier on today we talk about big money transfers Interesting to see what that's. I'm now very excited about the uh, Fernando Alondo, Alonso news. Keep you across that, as I say, if not by the end of this programme, Midweek Motorsport Wednesday night UK time on RadioLeMond.com. So, with the pit stops completed, then one more pit stop to go for the leading P1 cars. It's 1, 2, and 12, with Marcel Fesler on lap number 181 at the moment. The number two Audi, like Duval at the wheel on lap 178 and Nico Prost about to come through and complete his lap 178. We'll lift down to the pit lane for Matthias Bech, who is with Louise Beckett. Matthias, the, that gap really is closing in. Can you do it? Yeah, I think it's going to be hard. We, we still 
we will still fight, you know, but we in another in another way we will not take so much risk in the traffic because we are already P3 and it's a great result for the team. So it's always a compromise, but for sure we will push, but it's going to be hard because the Audi are really strong. No tyre change on that stop. Was that to reduce time? No, not really, because we double steam the tyres. So I will be in for the for the last hour, and uh, I'll try to push, and uh, we'll see what happens. The pressure is on, Mateus. <laughs> yeah, no, no pressure, no pressure at all. We have to finish the race at the first uh, target, and uh, and then we will see where we are. But we, we, with the podium, we will be really happy already. Thank you. Well done. Matthias Pesch down there in the Rebellion pit. We've got an issue out on the circuit at turn 13. Um, what is that for? It's an Aston Martin losing a right rear wheel. Off goes the wheel nut. And right where we had the fire earlier on, the Aston Martin number 95. This is Christian Pulsen, the leader in GTE arm. Now, can he get up the hill with the diff? The wheel manfully trying to roll up the hill. He cannot. He's beached it on the left-hand curb. And of course, with the... Oh, no, it's... He stripped the hub. He stripped the hub on the car. That's why it's gone. It's not just the wheel gone off. The... I can see the drive shaft spinning. The brake disc is not moving. And the leader who has been out front for the whole race, the 95 car, that's the Alan Simonson car, of course. That 95 car built up after Le Mans, brand new vehicle, and the right rear hub has collapsed, losing the right rear wheel, and no drive getting to the wheels. The diff is not locking up and giving him drive. Are they not gonna be able to move that very easily? We've got three, four burly marshals pushing that car to the driver's left. Just comes off the curb on turn 13, on turn 14, there goes the wheel nut, and I honestly think, though, at that stage, that has been caused by a... Wow, that wheel hits the barriers at some lick. Big spin. That's a fast corner as he's going up the hill. Does the tyre career into the back of the car? Of course it does. And there's a big black Michelin mark on the left rear of the car. It's like falling off your motorcycle. It doesn't matter how you do it and where you go. It always seems to catch up with you. And the marshals have let that car roll that back down the hill. And Christian Poulsen... What a disaster, and Jamie Campbell-Walter goes through in the 98 Aston. It was a 1-2 for Aston, and Rui Aguash in the 8-star car will go through in a second in the Ferrari. Paolo Roberti in the 80 Porsche will go through to third. Drama once again with just over an hour and 10 minutes still to go here. Goodness me, Paul, what's going to happen next? Well, it always seems to happen to Aston Martin, doesn't it? Uh, or involve Aston Martins, at least. Um, but I suppose with so many of them, then uh, <laughs> it's kind of playing the numbers game, isn't it? But uh, no, desperately bad luck there. Um, whilst that was happening, uh, we also had a message on the screen to say that the number 92, Mark Lieb Porsche, was in the pit lane with a puncture. Oh. Uh, they've now replaced that car and uh, they've got going again. It was Ricard Leitz who came into the pits with the car. Uh, they've refueled it, put the wheels back on it or put a uh, fresh tyre back on it uh, and sent Mark Lieb on his way again. So uh, number 92 is uh, back out on his way uh, in fourth place in GTE Pro. But uh, I mean, the other th thing that's so heartbreaking there for uh, um, for the for the Aston Martin was just how well that car was going. I mean, they did have everything going for them in the Christian Paulson in the uh, GTE AM class. I mean, that car, uh, and as a result of that, uh, it's going to elevate uh, Stuart Hall's car um, back into uh, the lead of the class, uh, when which he was describing as uh, uh, a bit of a pain, wasn't he, earlier on? Mm. Um, Paulson has had a look at that rear. The tyre is about to be re and tyre and wheels about to be reunited with the car. But I think in vain. Just a shame he couldn't get that car up the hill. Marcel Fesler comes up on the 57 Ferrari. Tracy Crone back at the wheel. He's about to make up a position at the end of this lap as he passes the stricken Aston of Christian Poulsen. Marcel Fesler then leading the motor race comfortably, laps in hand, 51 seconds between Duval 
in second and Nico Prost in third and a second of that made up on the last lap by Loic de Val in the number two Audi. In P2, 26 G-Drive Oregon, John Martin back at the wheel of that car, being well, just on 35 seconds of a lead between himself and the number 35 Morgan, the Oak Morgan of Bertrand Baguette. Olivier Platt, number 24, Oak Morgan in third is another eight seconds behind. Then Nick Mendassian, who is 30 seconds behind Platt, in the 49 Orica Pecom car, needs the point for the championship. And Manassian, with the car's fastest first sector of the race, is beginning to push on. Christian Poulsen's body language says everything you need to know about motor racing. Endurance racing, he's miles ahead of the field. He's been playing with the pro cars all day. And then an hour and 11 minutes to go and quite literally the wheels come off the dream. Marcel Fesler will be hoping that he doesn't have the same issues. Fastest first sector of the race by Fesler that time around, the Swiss driver Hopswies beginning to work his way through traffic as the sun is dropping down below the grandstands on the western side of the circuit right behind our commentary position. Shadows lengthening quite a lot of the circuit now in full dark. It does mean as you're coming up the last hill towards the double last corner, double apex last corner, that you do have the sun in your eyes for quite a long time, and that's been the case for a wee while now. Here is the number one Audi radio.
uh, rundown and the position of John Martin in number 26, uh, the leading car, seems fairly well assured. Um, he will still need to make a splash and dash type of pit stop. Bertrand Baguette uh, in the second place car. Uh, he is the next one due a stop in the P2 class and that will probably drop him out of second place because Nick Manassian is sufficiently close behind that he will take over in second place in the class but then Manassian himself will need to do a uh, full service stop so uh, we'll have uh, quite an interesting situation certainly uh, the number 26 uh, the G-Drive racing car uh, has the upper hand uh, as indeed uh, is entirely warranted because Mike Conway and Roman Rissinoff have done a great job yes. uh, and there's no reason to suppose that John Martin won't continue to do that um, but the battle for second is going to be interesting between the PCOM car which uh, Minassion as I say will still have to make a stop but uh, again the stops will come first and might be a little bit longer So I go down to the power by Nissan pit lane thank you Paul Trustwell Joe Bradley and uh, you've had the uh, obviously the 24 Morgan in the pits for quite some time. That looks like that's game over for that car, I think. No, I don't think so, John. I think they're going to try it, or they are indeed trying to repair oh, it. Wow. I'll tell you exactly what's gone wrong with the car. Now, there is a small alloy bracket that bolts to the gearbox casing, which the rose joint of the bottom wishbone slots into, and then a bolt goes through the bracket, securing the, the rose joint of the wishbone in there. That bracket appears to have pulled out of the gearbox casing. Ah. Now, what that means is, if it's pulled George, out... Just one second, I will go down to the pit lane. Here's Sir Luis and Giancarlo Fisichella. Time's ticking away and you've still got that lead. Can you keep it? I hope so. It's uh, really tough. It's very close. Uh, it looks like the Aston Martin is a little bit faster uh, for about 25 laps than us. And then uh, the last uh, 20 laps, it's uh, a little bit slower. So that, that could be good for the end of the race. I hope to to keep the first position until through the end. It will be a fantastic result for us. Thank you. Uh, back to Joe Bradley uh, to finish off that explanation on the 24 Oak Racing rear suspension issue. Now, obviously, if you had the car at the workshop, you'd have the car up about four foot in the air and you'd take off the yes. whole rear suspension. However, they're doing it with the suspension in situ. Oh. They're leaning across a very, very hot carbon disc brake and they are getting their hands into very confined spaces at the back of this car and trying to get where the bolts bolt the bracket onto the casing and if it's pulled out then invariably in my estimation that means the casing stripped its uh, threads ah. it appears the job is done though because the rear bodywork is now being gotten and is hovering over the rear of the car the work is, is finished on the left hand side of the car which is where the problem was just some finishing touches going on to the right hand side of the car maybe they were checking the right hand side uh, brackets and mounting bolts whilst the car was in just to make doubly sure in the background you heard the sister car the number 35 oak racing car just leave the pits there the tires are now being bolted onto the car final touches so no the 24 car is going to get back into this race Thank you very much indeed, Joe Bradley. Excellent technical description there, very impressed. Uh, time for you out there, as well as us here, to think about the entirely unofficial RadioLeMond.com Robin Goodman Spirit of the Race Award. It's something that we do when we have uh, the full team together. Uh, something, person, team, whatever, that uh, you feel has caught the eye and might not have had the best result, might not have uh, be taking home a trophy tonight, but just something that captures the spirit of the race. Robin Goodman, one of the original members of the RadioLeMond.com team, always a smile on his face, always kept us motivated and going through the, the wee morning hours, as as well as keeping Paul Trustwell fed and watered, in fact, uh, in fairness, Paul, and uh, always a great guy to have around, Robin, so sorely miss him at Le Mans. And a great enthusiast as well, I mean, I think that's the, uh, the part of it. Because Indeed. You, you, even even though he was doing other things, he never actually appeared on the broadcast, you could always have a sensible conversation with him about what was going on in the race um, and, and what the prospects were beforehand and afterwards he'd clearly been paying attention. So uh, not only um, a, a great service to Radio Le Mans, uh, but also um, a, a great enthusiast. And um, yeah, I'm still a friend because we still exchange emails and uh, I bumped into him earlier this year. Uh, 
might have been last year already, like time flies. Um, but uh, no, great, uh, great to have you. And I'm racking my brains now to try and yes. uh, to try and think. Um, I, 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 I keep seeing those two. Um, mine heart has to go out to Christian Poulsen. So yeah. uh, I'll put Poulsen on the short list. Yeah, I, I think you might find favour with the collective wisdom out there in our broadcast listeners and and viewers. Uh, the responsible adult has a say in this uh, as well. But we'll put a, a couple of three out to you uh, out there who are listening, and then you can uh, tweet in uh, with the the hashtag to at Radio Le Mans. And normally we just have a hashtag spirit of the race, and you can let us know. Uh, Joe Bradley, anything sticking out for you at this point uh, for the Spirit of the Race Award? Spirit of the Race Award, let me think. Uh, come uh, back to you I, if you need to think. No, no, I've got the answer unless you need to go for me. No, 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 go, go. Yeah, go. it's uh, um, Stefan Sarazan for um, him. I know he didn't take part in much of the race, but certainly if we're looking at spirit of the race, huh? him trying and attempting to get that Toyota back on the road by ripping that car apart and getting rid of bits of bodywork for me showed the spirit, the very true essence of endurance racing. Okay, so there's a couple 95 car and Stefan Sarazan in the eight Toyota trying to get back I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw in uh, a couple here um, an obvious one would be Mike Conway and uh, doing that massive stint at the start of the race uh, but I'm also gonna throw in the 91 of Patrick Pele let's uh, go to Christian Poulsen who's down in the pits with Louise category you were up amongst them but what happened there we saw the wheel come off yeah I don't know what happened there. Um, the last corner I had to pit this uh, this lap and uh, in corner 12 I, I just lost lost the wheel so yeah really frustrating because you really have put in a superb performance in the 95 car yeah we were good we were all misleading with a with a lap so uh, we just have to, to cruise the car home and yeah the stand went perfect so I didn't have any problems and then yeah Bad luck. Yeah. Disappointed, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's the way it is. Thank you. So Christian Poulsen then, after being uh, nominated by Paul, Louise jumps in and gets him. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm also going to show the 91 Porsche in as well, because they had a great start and got knocked out of it, and have just quietly gone about their business. A 34-4 last time around by uh, Patrick Fapile. Mark Lieb in the 92 car. You got a bit of case for them as well. Similar thing. 34-2 for them and they're back up into third and fourth in the class albeit uh, still a couple of laps away from the leaders in that category so if we've tickled your fancy with any of those or you've got something else hashtag spirit of the race to at Radio Le Mans let's have a word with another one of the people who we've just uh, nominated Mike Conway is down in the pit lane with Joe Bradley hello Mike we just well, in fact, we're just watching the 26 car of Mike Conway come in for a good stop with his teammate. I think it's Roman at the wheel, Mike, is that right? No, it's, uh, it's John, John Martin, but um, yeah, Roman's already been in, but obviously looking good. We've led all the race now. we just got to have a good clean stop here. Um, it's a torture watching it, to be honest, but uh, <laughs> it's good. They've we, been driving well. We've got a good buffer to the uh, own cars, but that's who we're racing, so we got to we copy them when they, when they change for new tyres. And... Uh, you know, hopefully we can get away here and then stay in front of the lead. Well, the car is just about to pull out of its pit box and resume. Mike, it's got to be said that was one hell of a stint you did at the beginning of this race. Can you remember and tell us a little bit about that, how that went? Thank you. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, just, just pushed, but I didn't want to, you know, it was a big, this thing here, we weren't sure about how the tyres were going to hold up. So just a case of nursing the tyres a little bit at the beginning and just seeing what we had, middle of the stint. And they felt good, so kept pushing all the way through. And um, we, ch we tried a different tyre uh, for the when we stopped, and it seemed to be okay. It held up for a double stint, which was uh, it's quite rare around here. So it's, it's been tough though, you know, when the tyres start moving around, it's really hard to keep the lap times low. So, uh, but it was good. Happy with uh, with the job we did, and Roman's done a great job, and so is John at the moment. I'll leave you. I'll leave you then, Mike, to keep uh, to continue torturing yourself by watching this clock tick down. Good luck, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like that. 